My name is Michael Schilman and I'm Storybook's product lead. I'm really excited to introduce you to some foundational changes in Storybook 7. These are changes that affect every Storybook user, whether your focus is on developing components, documenting, or testing them. I'll start with our design refresh of Storybook's UI and continue with some big changes to how we write stories. To motivate these changes, let's look at how Storybook usage has evolved over the past few years. In the early days, Storybook was a niche tool for UI perfectionists. And Storybooks were simple. They captured use cases for a small number of atomic components. Fast forward to today, and Storybook is a mainstream fixture of the front end tool chain. Now there are over 150,000 public GitHub projects that use Storybook, and we estimate more than double that number of active Storybooks. As Storybook has matured, so is its usage. Today's Storybooks capture complex production design systems and entire apps with data mocking and interaction tests. Large Storybooks today contain thousands of stories. So you can see where this is going. On one hand, we've got hundreds of thousands of storybooks, and on the other hand, we've got hundreds or even thousands of stories per storybook. We haven't counted how many stories are out there, but it's in the millions and it's growing exponentially. That means everything we can do to improve ergonomics goes a really long way. So today I'm gonna to talk about three ways we're improving ergonomics in Storybook 7. I'll start with our design refresh, which cleans up a lot of things in Storybook's UI. Then I'll introduce component story format version three, which is a better way to write stories. And finally, I'll talk about better TypeScript support, which makes it faster and easier to write those stories correctly. The first thing you'll notice about Storybook 7 is that the UI has gotten a nice facelift. Our design refresh contains a lot of details that add up to a cleaner, better user experience. The biggest change is that we are able to really clean up the toolbar at the top of the screen. Storybook 6 contained a Canvas tab and a Docs tab. This information architecture was confusing to users, and it occupied the most valuable screen real estate in Storybook. So we got rid of it. We'll talk more about the new behavior when we talk about Storybook 7 Docs later. The next area of, clean, of a design update is the icon set. We redrew more than 200 icons to increase visual acuity and then optimize them to reduce weight. The new icons are sharper and load much faster than before. We also changed our tab bar's responsive behavior to eliminate horizontal scrolling on narrow screens. Improvements like this go a long way to making Storybook more usable, especially on mobile devices. Storybook contains a wide variety of menus in its UI, and we've really cleaned house here in 7.0. Storybook's menus are tighter, more consistent, and more informative than ever before. And last but not least, we have dark mode. Storybook 7 automatically detects your system settings, and the entire UI adapts accordingly. Now I'm going to talk about a better way to write stories. Component Story Format version 3, or CSF3 for short, was introduced in Storybook 6.4 and has undergone a year and a half of refinement with the community. Now in 7.0, we're making it the default. The biggest change is that CSF3 gets rid of a lot of boilerplate, so your story files are shorter and simpler. We've also added support for scripted interactions and assertions so you can test your stories. And to make upgrading easy, We've got code mods to automatically migrate your stories to the new format. But if you're not ready for that yet, Storybook 7 is fully backwards compatible. So how is CSF3 different? On the left, we see a simple story file from Storybook 6.5. And on the right, we see its CSF3 equivalent. We'll go into some details in a second, but the TLDR is that less code means that CSF3 is easier to write and maintain. Let's start with a really basic hello button example. The default export is called meta, and it specifies the component we're building in isolation. And each named export is called a story, and it specifies the inputs that create a meaningful state of that component. Each file contains one or more stories. Each story object can have a render function that can fully specify and customize how your component is instantiated. In CSF2, 
Every story was effectively its own render function. But 90% of the time, writing a story is just passing some inputs to your component in a standard way. So in CSF3, if you don't specify the render function, each story renders the component and passes in all the arguments. This really simplifies your code. Object spread is another great feature of CSF3. When you're trying to model complex states, it's useful to be able to reuse and extend existing stories instead of writing them from scratch. Object spread is familiar to all JavaScript developers, and now that stories are objects, it comes for free in CSF3. Another big change is CSF3's play function. This allows you to execute scripted interactions after the component is rendered. It allows you to reach new component states that aren't possible to get to just by passing props. For example, it's great for simulating form validation states. It also enables a bunch of new testing features that we'll talk about later. The last thing CSF3 streamlines is sidebar navigation. Storybook 7 figures out the title of your components based on the file location and displays them in the sidebar to reflect the directory structure of your project. You can also customize the title to structure your storybook the way you want it. Putting this all together, your story files are going to get a lot shorter and we're going to be eliminating millions of lines of boilerplate. After a few iterations of CSF, we feel like we're really getting it right. CSF3 is a solid foundation for both Storybook and the ecosystem of tools that produce and consume component examples. The last foundational improvement I want to talk about is TypeScript in Storybook 7. Fun fact, over 85% of pre-release Storybooks use TypeScript. That's why we're doubling down on TypeScript to make it easier to write stories with type safety and auto-completion. As a user, you want a few basic things from TypeScript. First and foremost, you want TypeScript to be able to check that you're providing everything that your component needs to render properly. You also want auto-completion so that you don't need to look at your component documentation every five seconds. That's exactly what TypeScript gives you, so that sounds pretty easy, right? Well, it's not as easy as it looks. Storybook provides a lot of flexibility for writing stories. Types can come from your component, from your story's render functions, and from various metadata like arg types. And component inputs can be spread across your stories, your meta, and your project annotations. To address these problems, we've improved the meta type for the default export. We've also introduced the story object type for CSF3 object stories. These are smart types that provide type safety and auto-completion. But that was a really simple example. Now let's look at something more complex. In this example, we have args split across both the story and the meta. If both the label and primary args are required, how do we let TypeScript know about this cascading? The first change is that instead of declaring the default export as of type meta, we say that it satisfies meta. Satisfies is a new TypeScript 4.9 feature that provides more type information with the variable. Then, when we declare our story type, we parameterize it not by our component, but by the meta object. This, along with the smarts inside meta and story obj, give TypeScript everything it needs to check properly. That was a quick introduction to our new CSF3 TypeScript types. In addition, Storybook introduces types for Storybook's config files, main.ts and preview.ts and we'll be continuing to improve Storybook support for TypeScript in the 7.x releases with proper typing and documentation for story parameters from essential add-ons. We think we're on the way to providing the best possible de developer experience for TypeScript developers.